So now we are talking about the last part of SQL um, that I am teaching here during that course, uh, namely uh, subqueries. And before starting with that, I would like to um, talk about, uh, I would like to make one, let's say, definition, yeah, and uh, talk about of uh, one consideration here uh, with respect to results of queries. So if we have a query, usually we get a table as a result, yeah, certain columns that are uh, of interest and certain rows that should be uh, in the result. Yeah, this is a this is a result of a query, and uh, each if I take uh, the intersection of a row and a column, I am addressing one specific cell. Now that's a data cell here. That how how I'm, I'm calling it. And sometimes um, uh, we we have queries, for example, select count star from from table, uh, that only delivers one row, one row and one column, and such um, results. Th this table here only has one singular cell, as you see. And tables that only have one singular cell uh, could be regarded as the value itself. Yeah. So instead of uh, saying I'm delivering a, a complete table here with only one row and one column, I just um, can say I'm delivering that value here. Yeah. And this uh, distinction and this specific definition here that the one column, one row table could be regarded as a value that that plays a role when defining uh, subqueries. Okay, then let's um, jump into uh, the stuff of, of uh, subqueries. And um, uh, up to now, uh, uh, we, we, we can, for example, um, do the following. Uh, we can have a very simple query. And let's go to the employee table. I do the company table. We can say select um, last name, yeah, from uh, employee where salary is greater than let's say sixty thousand or something like that. Yeah, then we get all the employees that that um, have an employee uh, greater than sixty thousand. Yeah, and we can, um, for example, we can do the following. We can also uh, select um, average uh, salary. Yeah. Um, from employee. That's all something that we can do. And that's the average salary, yeah, 63,000 something. So if now I would like to figure out who earns more than the average salary, I can, uh, I can execute that average query, yeah, can take here that value, yeah. Um, and 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 copy it, yeah. Um, copy selection, for example, yeah. Put it over in here, yeah, and can execute it. But of course, that's very clumsy. And if if the data changes within the database, I have to to change the query here, yeah. Uh, that of course it's it's not a suitable way to express the. Um, the intent of getting all, all employees that earn more than the average, yeah? And the solution is the following. Nest a query within a second query. And that is what, what you see here. You see, I take the employee table and then I have usual where clause where, where I state that the salary should greater than should be greater than something. And this something here, um, this is not not a value, but again, it's it's an expression that has been calculated. But in this case, 
um, the calculated value uh, is um, uh, generated by a query, by, by, by another query. And therefore we have a query here, a subquery nested within the main query. And this is what's that this is a specific instance here of, of subquery, namely subquery in the where part. And in order uh, to uh, work, uh, this subquery here must deliver one value in that sense here, namely one column, one row. But that's the case because we only have one column here because we have stated only one column. And if we don't have a group by, um, we take the average of all salaries leading, leading to one uh, resulting row. So we have one column, one row. That means we have this situation here, one column, one row, and this can be regarded as the value itself. And then, it, and therefore it works. Yeah. So this is um, something completely new yeah, that, that we have, that you could nest queries. And uh, this kinds of nesting uh, is even a further boost in the expressivity and the expressiveness of, um, of uh, queries within SQL. So this was a, a subquery in the where part. Then let's talk about um, a second position uh, where a subquery uh, could, um, could be applied. And that's um, in the select part. So let, let's dissect here that, that query here. So we have, we, we take the employee table, so we take all records from the employee table. That means we get all eight records because there is no filtering. And for each record now, we output the last name, the salary, and then um, a value that is uh, calculated by a subquery again. And, and again, we, we have this, our average salary subquery here. Yeah. And if you look, if you look at the result here, you see we have um, the singular records here, Miller, Sanchez, and so on. We have um, their salaries. And since uh, this subquery here um, in every row, is calculated in the same way, namely take the average of all employees. So it does not depend on a singular employee. Uh, all rows here get the same value with yeah, the, um, the aggregated value here. And the last row that's called diff um, is again a calculation, namely the, the difference between salary and the average salary. Yeah, and now, um, we can compare uh, each, uh, each, we can see how each employee is um, with his salary is related to the average salary. If he has more or less than the average, if he earns more or less. Yeah. And one, one interesting thing here is you see salary is on the detailed level and average salary is actually on the aggregated level. And uh, beforehand um, we, we could, we were not able to combine values from different level. That was not possible uh, here dealing with aggregation alone, as we have, as, as I have explained it uh, in, in the last weekend uh, tomorrow. Uh, this this uh, uh, in the previous here uh, this morning. Uh, but now it's it's possible because it is um, wrapped, wrapped within a subquery. And if an aggregated value is wrapped within a subquery, uh, it is regarded again on the detail level uh, in the outer query. And that, that allows us to combine aggregated and non-aggregated value. What you see is quite common because um, such kind of uh, analytics uh, definitely, definitely makes sense to do. You know? The only thing that 
that's uh, uh, missing now is uh, a subquery in the from part. Yeah, you, you remember we have we have the um, um, select, we have we have the where part, and we have also the from part. And um, let's look how that could be done. And let's um, let's format it a little bit. So let's see, and here. Okay, that that's already that's also something you have to digest. Um, okay, so let's see how we can how we can approach it, and maybe I should uh, I will do that in the in the DB visualizer. Okay, let's start here with the inner part yeah and um, so we have an outer query that is employee join with something on join condition so disregarding that complex something here yeah if i i would do it that way here then we have a table employee and a, a table vou yeah uh, and we would join them but of course this table vou is not uh, is not a table that uh, is, is not in our database uh, since uh, because it is um it's uh, it, it it's a subquery and um um, let's take a look at the subquery. It delivers the following. It delivers org unit, uh, the idea of the org unit, and the average salary of the org unit within the org unit. Yeah, and um, this VOU, this is just a, a, a renaming of that table here. So this subquery here, from here to here, um, could be regarded as some kind of virtual table. So this is not a physical table within the database, but it's a virtual table that is uh, calculated by means of a query. And therefore, I have called it VOU for virtual org unit table. Yeah, I've given that, that name here. That, that's a virtual org unit table. But in a query, it could be regarded as a uh, as the other uh, the, also as the other, like the other tables, and therefore, I can join it. For example, with the employee table, and you see e dot org unit. I'm I'm joining the employee with this virtual org unit table in the same way uh, as I have done it uh, in other queries with the with the physical uh, org unit table. Yeah, and this is possible. And now, if I if I execute the whole query here, yeah, um, you see it looks um, quite similar to to the thing that we have done before. And let's um, let's put it here also in the DB visualizer. So this is a query I have explained before, and we have seen that we have taken the average of all employees and have calculated the difference. And the second one does something similar. And who of you figures out what, what has been done here, what, what I have done here? In the second one, you've uh, basically uh, made a query, a subquery, and uh, you have joined that virtual result with the uh, employee org unit. Yeah. And 
then display the average salary and the different salary. Yes, but from a here um, uh, logical point of view, what is the difference between this and that here? Uh, so maybe you have we use like join command to join this virtual table, like and then yeah. first query, like it's just like uh, you use like from from employee table, like in here, like you join through virtual table. Yeah, so but that, that's also more or less technical. Uh, from from the logical, so the the contents, the, the result of the query. What what are, what have um, what is the difference between this and that? You also see here uh, some kind of diff, yeah, and you also see some kind of averaging. But what is the difference? In the first query, I have taken the average salary among all employees. And in the second one, what kind of average salary I have taken here? According to org units. Exactly, according to org unit, yeah. It's much more um, fine-grained uh, analytics here. Uh, since I'm not talking about all, but I'm talking about each org unit and how, how it is related to the average in the org unit. You see, Sanchez and Miller, they are in the same org unit here, yeah? And uh, the average salary of that org unit is 90,000, yeah? And then we have O'Brien and Lee, yeah? And so on, yeah? Um, so uh, with this, um, so one thing is, as you have correctly uh, seen, is that I now have used a subquery uh, within the from part, but uh, I also have used that to to solve a different question here, yeah. Um, uh, namely, to have a more fine-grained uh, uh, calculation, yeah, of of difference with respect to averages. And um, in contrast to the first and second one, so subquery and where part, the subquery must deliver one singular cell. Subquery and select part, the subquery must also deliver one singular cell. Uh, in contrast to that, the subquery itself here in the from part, that is allowed to, to deliver a complete table. Yeah. In the front plot, it can uh, it can have a, a complete uh, tabular result. Okay, um, so let's uh, let's adapt our our general view uh, on the structure of a query. Uh, Professor, okay, so can you please paste that uh, second uh, query in the chat? Yeah. Yeah, and Professor, like. Uh... Yeah, in this example. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have joined on basis of org unit, this yeah. virtual table. Yeah. So normally we usually take a primary key of this first query in order to join this query to virtual table, like because as there is no such primary or foreign key in that table, we define the table. Yeah. Um, so how to select that, like which on which basis we give the joint? Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, so for a join, actually, it doesn't matter if something is a primary uh, a primary key or a foreign key. You can uh, join according to all kind of columns. That that there's no no. Uh, so that is not fixed. That it must be a primary key or a foreign key. Yeah. But in this case. E dot org unit nevertheless is the uh, foreign key, yeah. And since we group by org unit here, yeah, um, by the column org unit, that means in the aggregated table, each org unit is also unique here, and therefore um, it's more or less the same as the primary key of the org unit table. 
yeah in, in essence it's the same as before if you hadn't if you have taken the the uh, virtual uh, occlusion table or the the occlusion table itself mm -hmm. that yeah, yeah yeah thank you okay any any further questions okay um then i have prepared an exercise for you uh, namely uh, uh, for that that relates again to the playlist yeah i would like you to figure out by means of a query the name of all titles that are longer than the average duration of all titles yeah And I will also put um, in order to, uh, sorry, in order to give you some background material here, I will also put the other queries here in the chat. So once again, um name of all titles of music pieces that are longer than the average duration of all titles namely in the sub query you, you calculate the average um average runtime yeah it's about uh, 348 sec uh, 48 seconds yeah and this duration then is taken Everything that is uh, 348 is lo uh, longer than 408 is in, in the output. The similar thing um, in calculating differences with respect to the average difference and duration of each title with respect to the average duration of all titles. Yeah. Okay. So um, we take all titles. So no filtering. That's fine. Then we select the name. We take the duration in second, and then we calculate the average and as you see um, the average here is the same for all of the ones yeah and and in the further column the difference column we just uh, subtract both values from each other and then we get the diff value yeah Actually, that's it exactly Okay, and then see that Shavi uh, has provided a different solution that let's discuss let's see let's add a query i'm getting difference as zero so i want you to understand how yeah so let's uh let's yeah you have provided uh that that's a different thing that you have solved Uh, you had zeros. Okay, and I see. So, okay, let's see. Um, so, me tools. Uh, you can you can copy over me tools a solution that that's the correct solution. Yeah. For, uh, of course, you can truncate the values if you would not have these large uh, digits after the decimal point. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. So then let's see. Uh, let's take a look at Shavi's uh, solution. So. Um, Xavi has taken the title table and then has taken, yeah, the title table. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the, if, um, if I take, if I take that grouping here, I have the title table grouped according to the SID. Xavi, how many groups do I get? One. 13. Okay, 13. All, all the SIDs will get. Yeah, they are all different, all different groups. Yeah. Um, so um, usually grouping according to the primary key that that usually makes no sense because it gives you the table in itself. Yeah. And um, so let's what, what how, how do we have to fix that? Shavi? Uh, what have we, we have, what do you have to do we have to do? According to which we have to group? Um, durations. No. The name. Okay. 
um, um, so actually um, what uh, let's see um, so in essence you are going to build a, a different query namely the one where where it is not according to the average of all but with respect to the average uh, of the corresponding yeah, playlist or genre that's not clear here yeah um, so I I, I, I I in principle I have to change it here the, the query as follows um, so let's try to to solve the same thing here that that as we have done above with a subquery in the from part yeah so how, how could that be done so first of all uh, in the subquery we have to calculate the average value of all titles in order to do so we just um, have to do that yeah so if I take that subquery here, we get this average duration. Okay. So now we don't have anything that we can uh, that we can um, use as a join condition. There is nothing because, but it doesn't matter because we want to add the result of this query here to every row in the title table. So we would like to build every combination of the title table with the result of that subquery here. Does anybody of you remember how we can do he create all combinations? What 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 the command for that it is? That's the cross join. So if I take the title table and make a cross join with that table here actually in essence i'm adding the average duration to every row yeah and order by uh, title SID. that's okay yeah so let's see if it already works yeah that looks quite okay let's see if it's the same value uh 11 30 11 30 one so that looks uh, quite similar, only the columns are a little bit different here, yeah? So we are cross-joining with the same table. We are cross-joining with a table that only has one okay. column and one row. So actually that's a little bit artificial here to do it with a cross-join. I just wanted to... Um, to recreate, to, to use your idea to have it in, in, in the front part, yeah. But then we, we need to have a cross join here. Uh, I would say that that's more natural to do it as it has been here, to have a subquery in the, in the select part, yeah. But nevertheless, it, it is possible to do that way, as you see, yeah. But um, then we have to uh, revert to the cross join here. Okay. Is it uh, clear for you, Shavi, what was the problem with the, your query before? Yes, thank you. Okay, that's fine. Then, um, then let's... Uh, Professor? Yeah? Uh, I'm, I'm facing some error. Can you please tell me like what's going wrong with my query? Yeah, of course. So there's a... Um, there's something from Xavi, yeah, and let's see. You, maybe you have the wrong database. It works here. Okay. From Miraj, sorry, Miraj. As you see, it works, yeah? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you only you don't have this average in the output, but that doesn't matter here. Yeah. Okay, then last but not least, uh, an exercise um, where you need a subquery in the front part. Also, take a look at uh, the example from the company. Yeah, all titles and difference in duration with respect to average of the playlist they belong to. 
yeah, and not uh, not average of all titles, but average uh, of the titles of that playlist they belong to. We have um, we we take the title table and we join it with some uh, table that with a table that is created by means of a subquery. And if you take a look at the subquery here, we take the title table and group it according to the playlist ID. That means for each playlist, we get the average number of seconds per playlist. And I have called that VPL for virtual playlist because it's some kind of virtual playlist table here. And then I have taken the titles, the foreign key to its playlist and, um, and let it point to the playlist ID of the virtual playlist table. Yeah, and this duration is duration per, per playlist ID and uh, this is taken here um, in the output of the overall query, yeah. We might be interested in, um, let's take, let's say we would like to, uh, so in, in that here database, we have records from 2014 and 2015 in, in that database. And let's assume, yeah, that that's the time we are talking about. And uh, what what we would, what we might want to, to investigate is, uh, take the top three products from last year, take that revenue and try to figure out of those top three products, what is their revenue in this year? Yeah, once again, um, let's take a look back uh, and see the performance of last year. And we would not look at all products. Let's just take the top three products. And for those top three products, um, we would like to figure out what is the revenue within that this year. Yeah, that sounds complicated, doesn't it? So let's see how that could be solved. And it could be solved by means of the following query. That uh, exhibits the the power, yeah. Or again, the power of um, of um, of SQL. Okay, so these product IDs, yeah. I have not I have not joined the the product table. I've just taken the ID here in order to simplify things, yeah. These products, yeah, for five hundred forty nine, one thousand four hundred fifty two, and nine hundred. Um, 52 that were the, the three tops from last year and the unit sales from this year are these and let's let's see how how, how that is done so um, let's take the subquery that that we see here so um, uh, I take that subquery that works from here to here and I execute it and this subquery delivers us the top three in 2014 so let's take a look at the subquery so we have taken the, the the sales table we have joined it with time by day and we have taken the year 2014 then within the subquery, we have done um, an aggregation, uh, namely the aggregation of on the product ID. So now we have um, the overall unit sales. We have taken the overall unit sales um, with in 2014, and we have ordered by by these unit sales in a descending mode here. And then this is something new that you can uh, always ask um, Oracle to only deliver uh, the first N rows. So fetch three rows only, yeah? So we are ordering and taking the first three. So these are the top three in 2014. And the result of that subquery 
um, and I've called it P3 top, as you see. Yeah, this is something that I have connected with um, uh, with a sales value in 2015. Yeah, so you see the the auto query groups groups um, the product IDs, but it only takes the year 2015 uh, values. And um, and only those um, rows appear in the result that are matched by the join. So only the, the three ones. But for those three ones, we we take the um, the sum of unit sales. But in two thousand fifteen, yeah. So this is also a, a common kind of thing that you would like to do. You you you. And you see here um, the combination of subquery and aggregation. Yeah, so we have a subquery in which we aggregate, and the result of that aggregated subqueries is used in the outer query, which by itself is an aggregation. Yeah, so this combination of aggregation, subquery, and all that nesting and what is possible there. Yeah, that that uh, provides you the means to to do. Yeah more or less all kind of sophisticated analytics that you would like to do. Yeah. Okay. And it, I think that is something that you should take a uh, look. Professor, yeah. like, uh, like why we used this join time by day T on like this command? Like... Because the year information 2014, yeah, um, is only available in time by day. Okay, so in order to join this table, we use that combination. We need it because there is no date column in the sales table itself. There's yeah. no date, it's just a, an ID to the date. Yeah. Okay. And and the, the year is then in therefore we, we have we need that join between sales and um, and time by day. Yeah. And then we have a further join here, P3 top, yeah, with uh, the products from the outer query in order to only see the, the three ones that we have selected, yeah? And actually the, 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 the condition, the three ones itself is, um, is based on an aggregation, yeah? Uh, professor, if we don't use the fetch command in the uh, nested query, can we also uh, later on use it uh, in the out out query, the main query after. Um, yeah, but then you don't have the knowledge what were the first three in 2014. You lose that knowledge in the auto query, you don't have that. No, but uh, if we don't use it in the nested query, we'll get the whole table. And that's that's right. So if I, I can just remove it here, yeah? If I remove that, then we get, uh, then we get it for all, yeah? Yeah, but then later on, if we apply it in the outer query, then also we'll get the same result or not? No, because uh, the the sums here are the 2015 sums, and we don't have the 2014 sums here in the outer query. Okay. 